What's going on guys and welcome back to Baker's DIY Lifestyle. So I went ahead and just started this video right off with a voiceover uh, because this morning I just got to work. My dad and my buddy came over to help me uh, regrade the yard and I didn't want to keep them waiting uh, filming the intro. But basically what you're going to be seeing throughout this video is the steps that we took to regrade the front yard and also get the backyard ready to throw some seed down. So we removed the tree right in the middle of the front yard there and the water was sloped towards the front of the house. So what you see us doing here is we actually tilled up that center section. My buddy right now with the tractor is grabbing the dirt and actually pushing it up to that hill coming off the road. So my, since I'm with a zero turn, it definitely slides down that hill quite a bit. So I wanted to remove as much dirt out of the center of the ground as I could and put it on that hill to make it just a little bit flatter. But ultimately what I wanted to do was create somewhat of a little gully right there in the center of the yard. Uh, because we have a trench on the far side, uh, on the other side of the yard that you can't see behind the green tractor there. Uh, but there's a trench in between our house and the neighbor where all the water goes. So I want all the water coming from the road to run down, get caught in that gully, go into the trench. And that should help uh, hopefully a lot of our water problem uh, in the crawl space of the house. Well, right here, what you're seeing is going ahead and tilling the entire front yard. Uh, I wasn't planning on doing that, but I ended up making the decision to go ahead and till the whole thing just because it hadn't rained in almost a month and the ground was ridiculously hard. So I knew the aerator wasn't going to do enough uh, to get good seed to soil contact through that time. But right here, what you're seeing is a high spot in the back where the water likes to get caught. There's also a, a terrace bank in between my house and the neighbor behind us there uh, that catches the water and it actually runs it between all of the houses towards the back of the neighborhood and down into a creek off the back. Uh, so once he got all that fixed up, uh, we filled in some holes right here at the top of the yard. I went ahead and tilled the backyard as well. What is going on guys and welcome to day number two of our yard renovation. So today we are going to be kind of hand leveling everything, getting our seed thrown down, getting our first application of starter fertilizer down and gonna be laying some straw in the front yard just to keep some of this uh, grass seed from moving. So back here, what you saw we did was we tilled up the very back corner. We ended up pulling a lot of that dirt up the hill a little bit because we have a problem with the water flooding back here. So I think what we did back there is gonna help a whole lot. And up here where we talked about those holes at the front, we got all that dirt filled in, got it tilled up as well. So we have a nice soft surface to start with. But what I'm gonna have to do is come through because we've got some deeper spots where the tiller went down a little bit farther and we're gonna have to hit it with a hand rake just to smooth it out for like a final grade then we'll come across with the spreader we'll get all the seed thrown down get our starter get our starter fertilizer in and then it's actually supposed to rain every single day this month. this week so it kind of worked out perfectly i'm not gonna have to get any of my sprinklers out i hope uh, at least for the next couple weeks to get the seed to start germinating and get it into the ground really good but overall, everything is nice and soft. It's ready to be planted. I'm really glad that I made the decision to go ahead and take the tiller over the yard because I know the aerator wouldn't have been strong enough to really get down into the hard dirt since it hasn't rained in about a month here. But as of the backyard, this is pretty much what we got. It's all looking good. I'll take you around to the front and show you that hill as well. All right, so here we are in the front yard. So right here, this is the biggest area that we tilled out and removed dirt from because the water would come down the hill and before it would wash all the way right up against the house. And we had a problem with water getting in the house. And we knew about that before we bought it, but we were gonna try to mitigate some of that right now before we get the grass seed down. And now that we've got that big oak tree out of the way. So a lot of this dirt right here, we took it from the center of the yard and put it up on the hill there, got it cleaned up and made the hill less steep for the zero turns. So we don't slide down and rip some of the grass up. So again, on the front yard, I didn't really do a lot on this side. I just took the tiller across it, broke it up, got it ready for the grass seed. But some of these tire tracks, again, I'm just gonna hit them right quick with our big uh, leveling rake. And once we get done with that, we'll get out the new spreader and get to throwing down some seed. Let's go.
All right, so I think I got everything pretty well smooth uh, for us to throw down the seed. But one thing I keep forgetting to move is this old well house here. So we flipped this thing over because I wasn't sure what exactly was underneath it. But we did find an old well uh, that we're not hooked up to anymore. We're back on city water as of right now. So we're going to get a little rock to cover that thing up, get rid of this old well house. And hopefully, if everything goes as planned, I'm going to try to get this old well pump running again. We'll see if we can get any water out of it or see if we can figure out what's wrong with it, why they decided to go to city water. Because if I can get that thing running, we're going to have a free irrigation system back here. And that's going to be pretty sweet. But for now, I'm just going to cut this thing up, get it loaded on the trailer with all that brick we picked up so I can take it to the landfill. Then we'll start throwing some seed. All right, so I'm walking back around the house. We just got done throwing some seed. I uh, started throwing some fertilizer and I am still getting used to that full behind spreader. So I'm so used to pushing it and just kind of knowing how much I need uh, that I'm not really opening the hopper up very much just so it flows out really, really slow. But I've gone over the backyard uh, three times now in different ways and I still have a little bit over half of the bag. I did only get one bad which is good for about 15,000 square feet at three quarters of a pound of nitrogen but we've got right at 22,000 so I'm a little bit light on the nitrogen right now but what I wanted to do was just go ahead get it thrown down get used to that spreader and then as soon as I start seeing some green I'm going to grab another bag and throw it down at the full application rate and that way I get kind of a spoon feeding effect going into the fall. Uh, once I get some grass actually growing, that's when I'll start hammering the fertilizer down a little bit harder. One other benefit to me uh, driving over the yard so much is that I've packed a lot of this tilled soil back down. And you can see behind me how pretty well flat it is. I mean, it looks good now. Uh, we got a few lumps and bumps and a few spots I'm going to have to fix for sure after the grass starts growing. But that's to be expected in any kind of renovation like this. But I'm going to walk around to the front yard here, uh, get the camera set up go ahead and throw some fertilizer down on that and we should be done but while I'm walking to the front yard I'll go ahead and show you something that my dad was working on while I was throwing the fertilizer down so I went ahead and got a couple seed blankets for this big hill in the front yard it's really the steepest spot in the whole yard and where we added all the dirt into the hill in order to flatten it out a little bit the dirt is super loose so right here we laid down a couple of seed blankets and it's looking pretty good I wasn't even thinking about putting fertilizer under that but it's too late now so we'll just let it grow up and see what happens but that's definitely the loosest part of the whole yard. And right here where it's flat, I know there's going to be a little bit of runoff, but hopefully, hopefully we don't have any super hard rains. Uh, that's actually going to wash it out. Hopefully it'll be just enough to keep the seed wet. But for now, I'm going to get the camera set up. We'll throw the fertilizer back here and that should be it for this video. All right, guys, so that is all I have for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the content and I hope that you will hit that subscribe button so that you can come back and watch this yard as it transforms from bare dirt all the way up into this nice tall fescue and Kentucky bluegrass in the back. So this AgriFab pull behind spreader, I will be doing a review on it uh, in a future video after I get a couple uh, more uses out of it and see how I like it, see how it's holding up. But as of right now, it seems like it's a pretty good spreader. I'm definitely gonna have to get used to the settings on it and actually driving around with it. But I was using my little stick there to open and close the spreader in order to make it work. So I might come up with some kind of a little hack in order to reach that handle a little bit easier and open and close the spreader. But overall, setup is awesome. I didn't have to push anything, so that was definitely a good thing. But I'm gonna have to figure out how to make it a little more accurate, just like I would with my uh, push behind spreader. But with that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.